Eighteen hundred hours Pakistan Standard Time. Assalamu alaikum. This is Radio Pakistan. The news read by Daman Zaman. The headlines. The Prime Minister has expressed solidarity with the oppressed Palestinians facing Israeli atrocities and tyranny. The United Nations Secretary General has urged Israel to exercise maximum restraint to avoid full-scale war as 50 Palestinians have been martyred in Israel's brute use of force. The Speaker National Assembly says Pakistan Parliament will continue to play its role in making CPAC and Belt and Road initiatives successful as they will bring prosperity in the region. The All Parties Huryat Conference expressing deep concern over the upsurge in the killing spree by India and Israel in the Indian illegally occupied Jammu and Kashmir and Palestine has urged the Organization of Islamic Cooperation, the United Nations and international rights bodies to rise and resolve the disputes. In India, a record high of 4,205 people have died of coronavirus infection across the country in a single day. China has called for orderly withdrawal of foreign troops from Afghanistan to avoid any disruption in the peace process. And now the news in detail. Prime Minister Imran Khan has expressed solidarity with the oppressed Palestinians facing Israeli atrocities and tyranny. In a tweet today, he said Pakistan stands with Palestine. The Prime Minister also shared the hashtags of We Stand With Gaza and We Stand With Palestine. Imran Khan also shared a post of famous linguist Noam Chomsky on the plight of the Palestinians. The United Nations has urged Israel to exercise maximum restraint to avoid full-scale war as the conflict has taken the lives of 50 Palestinians and six Israelis. The spokesperson for the Secretary General, Stefan Dureshik, in a statement said the United Nations Chief Antonio Guterres has expressed grave concern over the serious escalations in violence in the occupied Palestinian territory, including the latest one in Gaza. He said the United Nations Secretary General is deeply saddened to learn of the increasingly large numbers of casualties, including children from Israeli airstrikes in Gaza. Stefan Dureshik said the United Nations is working with all the relevant parties to de-escalate the situation urgently. Meanwhile, according to the Palestinian Health Ministry, at least 50 more Palestinians, including 14 children and three women, have been martyred and over 300 others injured in Israeli bombing raids in Gaza Strip. Israel carried out hundreds of airstrikes in Gaza early this morning. Israel claims its jets targeted and killed several Hamas intelligence leaders early today. The Russian President Vladimir Putin has urged Israel and the Palestinians to halt fighting in a call with the Turkish counterpart Recep Tayyip Erdogan, who said the world needs to give Israel a strong lesson. Kremlin, in a statement, said Vladimir Putin has called on the parties to de-escalate tensions and peacefully resolve the emerging issues. Meanwhile, President Recep Tayyip Erdogan of Turkey told the Russian president that the world needs to give Israel a strong lesson as the United Nations Security, Security Council is prepared to address surging Israeli-Palestinian violence. The United Nations Security Council is holding an urgent meeting today over the deadly unrest playing up between Israel and the Palestinians. Diplomatic sources said it is the second such session within three days. The closed-door meeting has been requested by Tunisia, Norway and China. The Foreign Minister Shah Mahmoud Qureshi has said the Saudi delegation will visit Islamabad after Eid al-Fitr to discuss the upcoming visit of Saudi Crown Prince and Foreign Minister to Pakistan. Addressing a news conference in Multan today, he termed the visit of Prime Minister Imran Khan to Saudi Arabia as highly productive. The Foreign Minister said the Prime Minister and Saudi Crown Prince signed an agreement under which Saudi Arabia-Pakistan's Supreme Coordination Council will be established 
which will provide an institutionalized and structured platform to boost relations between the two countries. The foreign minister said in his telephonic conversation with his Turkish counterpart, Mevlut Kavasolyu, it was proposed that Turkey would convene an emergency ministerial level meeting of the OIC for effectively raising the voice of Muslim Ummah on the Palestine issue. The Speaker National Assembly, Asad Kassas, says China-Pakistan Economic Corridor and One Belt, One Road Initiative are projects of development and prosperity for the region. Talking to Chinese Ambassador Non Rong in Islamabad today, he said the Pakistani parliament will continue to play its role in making this mega-project successful. He said Islamabad is proud of its everlasting friendship with China and these unique relations are based on mutual respect, trust, interest and strategic partnership and are an example for the world. On the occasion, the Chinese ambassador said his country values its ideal friendship with Pakistan and is keen to further expand cooperation with Pakistan in different sectors. The chairman China-Pakistan Economic Corridor, Hassim Salim Bajwa, has said 88% work on the 720 megawatt Karod hydropower project has been completed. In a tweet, he said the project is likely to be completed by April next year. He said the project is being completed with an investment of $1,720 million and it will generate 5,000 direct jobs. The Central Ruat e Halal Committee is meeting in Islamabad this evening for the sighting of the Shawwal Moon. The chairman of the committee, Maulana Abdul Khabir Azad, will preside over the meeting. This is Radio Pakistan. The Azad Jammu and Kashmir President Sardar Masood Khan has said ceasefire along the line of control is a step in the right direction as it saves life and property of more than 600,000 people. The statement issued by the President office today said India is involving in crimes including demographic changes, land grabbing, killings, detention of thousands of political activists and cultural invasion in the Indian illegally occupied Jammu and Kashmir. He said India's fascist Hindutva driven agenda wants to seek indemnity and immunity for its crimes against humanity in occupied Kashmir. The All Party's Hurriyat Conference Working Vice Chairman Ghulam Ahmed Gulzar has expressed deep concern over the incessant upsurge in the killing spree by India and Israel in the Indian illegally occupied Jammu and Kashmir and Palestine. In a statement in Sirinagar, he said when the Muslim Ummah is preparing to celebrate the holy festival of Eid al-Fitr, the subjugated people of Kashmir and Palestine are burying the dead bodies of their dear ones in graveyards for demanding restoration of their basic rights. He urged the Organization of Islamic Cooperation to rise and overcome challenges ahead, including ensuring the early resolution of Kashmir and Palestine disputes. He also expressed concern over the deteriorating health of dozens of senior Hurriyat leaders and activists languishing in different jails of India and the Indian illegally occupied Jammu and Kashmir. The APHC leader urged the United Nations and the World Human Rights Organizations to impress upon India to release incarcerated Kashmiri leaders to save their lives. In India, a record high of 4,205 people died of coronavirus across the country in a single day. According to the Health Ministry, the number of total fatalities has now risen to more than 254,000, while the country recorded 348,421 fresh COVID-19 cases during the last 24 hours. In Afghanistan, the Taliban have taken control of Narakh district in Vardak province near Kabul, killing several soldiers a day before a three-day ceasefire is due to begin. The Taliban spokesman Zabiullah Mujahid said on Twitter that they have captured the police headquarters, intelligence department and a large army base in the district. Meanwhile, a three-day ceasefire coinciding with the festival of Eid al-Fitr is set to begin from tomorrow. 
China has called for the withdrawal of foreign troops from Afghanistan in an orderly and responsible manner to prevent any hasty actions from adversely affecting and seriously interfering with peace and reconciliation process. The Chinese Foreign Ministry's spokesperson Hua Chenying, during her regular briefing in Beijing, said efforts should be made to forge a broad and inclusive political arrangement in Afghanistan to ensure that all ethnic groups and factions can participate in political life. She said China is ready to help promote peace and stability in Afghanistan. And finally, the weather. Hot and dry weather is likely to prevail in most plain areas of the country during the next 12 hours. However, rain when thunderstorm is expected at a few places in the Potohar region, Upper Punjab, Khyber Pakhtunkhwa, Kashmir and Gilgit Baltistan during evening and night hours. And that is the end of this news bulletin. For more news and analyses, log on to our website radio.gov.pk and you can also watch the live video streaming of our bulletins on the link. Facebook.